William Banting was an undertaker and he always had a fear of getting plumped from early days. And sure enough, between his 30s and 40s, he started finding he was growing larger. And it was at that stage he started seeking a solution for his own corpulence. But as his journey from 35 years on to 65 went on, he just got heavier and heavier. He was a man of means. He could afford to uh, pay the very best. And he says in his small little booklet, his testimony, um, he says, only the best physicians, the best uh, farms or spas he went to, Leamington Spa, Cheltenham Spa, famous even today for their hot springs, but nothing seemed to help. He, uh, other ailments, apart from his fatness, also started coming. He had an umbilical rupture, it's called a hernia today, um, and he had to have a truss. His knees were getting a bit weak, carry his, and he had to bind them up. He would go downstairs backwards because he feared he would break his ankles. And going upstairs, he would be puffing and blowing. But I think worse was the insidious snares and sniggers. And when he wanted to get uh, some entertainment, people would block him out. Or to get some refreshment at a pub, they would stand in his way and Sooner, he, he just stayed away, more and more, and he became lonely. Well, he, he just says, you choose, a fat person chooses rather not to be, and you really need it. You need it, uh, the company of other people. He, his hearing started going, and his sight, and it was at a stage when his sight was, um, begin to fail and his hearing that he consulted yet another doctor and that is where the insidious change started with one consultation every expert he had consulted but just by chance he came across a doctor and this doctor said my good man your problem is what you eat, but not the quantity of what you eat, which many people had told him. At age 35, he started finding his weight include, was increasing. At age 40, it had jumped up. At age 45, it still increased. He did find a momentary um, relief with great effort and he lost six pounds but very soon he was back on the same trajectory age 60 age 65 health failing all the time and it was in August 1862 that this undertaker met William Harvey. Initially, when, uh, the under, when the doctor said, you must change what you eat, he said, uh, well, what does that mean? What, what, what do you expect? I don't really eat all that much. Um, and I don't think I eat anything wrong. I eat what normal men and women eat. William Banting's diet consisted of bread, Milk, butter, sugar, milk uh, in his tea, and potatoes. Uh, and the, the doctor said, there are two things you've got to cut out. Everything with saccharins in, in other words, sugars, 
and starches. Today we know them as carbohydrates. carbohydrates. <coughs> and he thought, well, initially he thought, you know, I'm not gonna, what am I gonna live on? And the doctor said, well, there's a lot you can live on. And he said, well, I've tried everything else. I might as well give it a go. And he went home and he planned, I'm pretty sure he planned, and mutton, beef, fish, chicken, uh, tea, without any sugar or milk, vegetables and fruit. Fruit always cooked, never with sugar. And the amazing thing was within two days, he says his hearing started coming back, and his sight improved, and he felt more at ease, and he could start moving. And so, because he was a man of discipline and regularity, he, he kept record every three weeks without fail for a whole year. He found himself getting thinner. And it was between two and, th and four pounds every three weeks. And eventually it started only two pounds and then a week for those three weeks. And then in August, a whole year after he had started, in 1863, he started plateauing, and he immediately set about publishing his first pamphlet, which a thousand copies for free. He just had such a desire to help other people, and he had found something that nobody in the whole of England could help him. Started his story. They were soon given out, and he started getting feedback from the audience, the, the public, and uh, he, he went out. And his story is now inspiring many people to come to understand why his quality of food, it was a rich man's diet, and it was so much better than the, the poor man's diet that he used to have. And yet, it did such goodness. His umbilical rupture healed by itself. He felt more at ease. He slept better. The toilet was no longer a problem for him. It's a story that needs to be told. It was fairly effortless. And he felt that what these things do to our bodies is like putting um, petrol or fuel to the fires of corpulence, whereas these seem to extinguish it. And his last words in his book was that these are no-goes. The story 